Hi, I'm Alistair Kroll, Content Chair for Cloud Connect, the upcoming conference on cloud computing happening in Santa Clara this March. I want to talk a little about how to think about cloud computing costs. It's one of the topics we're going to be delving into in detail at the conference. Any cost model that you think of consists of three kinds of spending. You basically have upfront spending, which is the money that you have to spend to get into the game. You have fixed spending, which doesn't increase over time, but adds up. And then you have your variable spending, which increases as you get more and more usage. And those three elements of cost are important for any cost analysis. The upfront costs are often thought of as capital expenditures, or CapEx. And for a lot of enterprises, they may have existing in-house infrastructure they can already use, so building a private cloud may be built on that existing stuff. But one of the real reasons people like clouds is that there's no upfront cost. You're paying as you go. At the same time, if you look at uh, fixed costs, these are costs that happen no matter what. So if you have to hire someone to be in, no matter whether there's one call or 100 calls that day, that's a fixed cost. And there are fixed IT costs that enterprises can't avoid. Um, if you use a cloud, you can reduce the uh, fixed costs. But if you have IT running internal systems, don't think they're magically going to evaporate just because you're moving to a cloud environment. Things like provisioning, managing policy, and so on are always going to be there. And then there are the variable costs. And this is really where clouds take off. The variable cost of a cloud-based system is different from the internal costs because cloud providers can find much greater efficiencies in how they operate things. So a unit of computing from a cloud provider actually costs much less for the cloud provider than a unit of computing for an internal enterprise. There's three laws behind this, and they relate to three basic materials. The first is silicon. If you look at the cost capacity trade-off of computing, this is Moore's law, every year we get better and better at computing for the same cost. Think about another form of sand, glass. If you look at the cost capacity trade-off of networking, Netflix last year paid six cents to send a movie over the internet. This year it'll be three cents. That cost is dropping pretty fast. And then think about a third material, iron, specifically iron particles on storage. That's dropping just as quickly. If you look at the trifecta of computing, bandwidth, and storage, all of these things are doubling in their efficiency every year. And every time someone like Google builds a data center, it can do more with that data center than what the last one did. Which means, in a rather cynical way, that everything will be free. Cloud computing is on a breakneck ride to zero variable or marginal costs because of sand, iron, and glass. These raw materials were going to be free or too cheap to build. Well, what does that mean? A lot of people are thinking that IT and traditional enterprise IT can become efficient and can rival cloud computing costs by adopting cloud-like models. Automation, virtualization, a service-centric architecture, horizontal scaling, and so on. And that's absolutely true. If IT runs itself properly, it can get much more efficient than where it is today. But there's a second set of efficiencies, which is the cost savings that you get from being a cloud provider. When your main job is being a cloud provider, you write your own tools, you negotiate with landowners, you get better deals on power, you can share your capacity across clients and so on. And so even if enterprises get really, really efficient at operating IT, they won't be efficient at the inherent marginal costs of offering that IT because they're not in the business of cloud computing as a primary form of operation. They're in the business of doing something else and IT is in the service of that. But that's only half of the math, because business cases come not only from the costs, but also the revenues that you get from them. And IT is quickly moving from viewing the world of clouds as a set of peripherals for storage and communication to an underlying IT strategy. So clouds let companies become more agile, let them build and experiment more quickly, let them connect with their customers, and all of these things lead to an increase in the top line revenue, not just a reduction in the underlying costs. One of the things we're going to be covering at the conference is this idea of cloudonomics. And in fact, Joe Weinman, who's the person that coined the term cloudonomics, will be joining us and presenting his detailed analysis of the underlying costs of cloud computing, some of the revenues, and some surprising insights that he's gleaned along the way with a panel of experts. We really hope you can join us at Cloud Connect this March to discuss costs and ROI of cloud computing and many other topics. Thanks.